Listen, I want us to do something prophetic. Listen, when the song says, I trample on the enemies, don't pity him, match his head. You know who I'm talking about? Trample on the enemies. And I walk many miracles. Say, Glory be to God. I will. I do the impossible say Hallelujah, hallelujah, say, glory be to God. Now I want you in the next 60 seconds, if you know the victory that is being set for you this night, give the Lord the loudest shout of praise and be crazy about it. Be crazy about it. I said be loud about it. Come on, somebody. Give glory. The shout of a king is amongst them. It says, Joy and rejoicing shall not depart from the death of the righteous. name of the Lord. You know, I feel the anointing already. And <laughs> well, the shout inside is the wind inside. The shout inside is the victorious side. You are not crazy, you are just expressing faith. I said you are not crazy, you are just expressing faith. Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of us are ready for what God will do tonight? Now we have rejoiced. We have shouted. We have sung. I'd like your heart to be open. I'd like your heart to be set for what God will do. I want you to be so receptive tonight. That even as the word comes forth, things will begin to happen in your life. This is seven super Sundays, but God decided to set today for the ministry of deliverance and breakthrough. And I tell you the truth, for everyone that is here, as long as your heart is open, whatever limitation that the enemy has placed around your life, it doesn't matter how long it has been. 430 years they were in slavery but it took just one night for them to exodus out God doesn't need so much time to do a lot the short time you give him his power and his glory can break into your life and he rearranges everything in accordance to his will I believe tonight that families will be set free as you stand on this ground I want you to realize that you are standing not just for yourself but you're standing on behalf of everybody that is connected to you by blood. 
everybody that is connected to you by relationship. And the angels of the Lord that are here tonight, as we pray, as we repeat, receive his word and open our hearts, they will begin to go to work. There are altars that will be torn down today. There are chains that will be broken today. There are burdens that will be lifted. The Lord told me within the week that some of us that will come or that are here tonight who have no idea of the workings of the enemy around your life that has brought certain levels of impediments. As the word goes forth and as the ministration proceeds, your eyes will be open. Tonight, you will see the yoke that has been placed and you will see it lifted. And you know, it's very easy to confirm if yokes are broken. There are certain possibilities that were impossible that will overnight become possible. I've seen God do it again and again. And I know that he will do it today in Jesus' name. Do me a favor, hold hands with somebody, not more than two, just one person. Just hold hands with one person. Let's come in agreement tonight and trust the Lord for a visitation. As you're holding the hands of that person, you are agreeing by faith. The Bible says, whatever two of you shall agree are touching is done by my father. Whatever. He didn't give the list. He said, whatever. As you hold hands together, we are agreeing by faith. And you are also interceding for your neighbor. And I want you in the next two minutes to open your mouth, lift your voice, and cry for a divine visitation. In the name of Jesus. Everybody open your mouth and pray. Marosa Handre Bekila da Brahades. Ora Hava Sika Ibedorana Mahasoda. Jabrande Breka La Hava Susa. Father, visit my life. Visit my brother, visit my sister. Let chains be broken. Let yokes be destroyed. Let stagnation be over. Let breakthroughs happen. Let there be a tangible release of your presence, of your power at work. Are you praying? Make sure you're not just looking around. Make sure you are praying. Ala barosia bara mahadi barosti. Topra da bosi baha baladi bahasu. Shapa monsa habra pala bamre di gohuska. Shapa da kapa bala da bamre di kapala da baha. Shade raba bala da bala di kapala da brada bete kapa baba bala da bolda penata. Raba baba da kapa unza bete kapala da baha. Il a comme un atterri à Cobonzo, il m'a ma gombe bebe capalata. Rababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababab
Be still. Eyes closed everywhere. I just heard a loud shout now. It's a sign for what God wants to do. There's somebody the anointing will come on. Meanwhile, before we even start, there are a few persons here that God is coming to break the yoke that has been placed on your life. Holy Spirit, confirm your word. Visit those persons tonight. Let the anointing that commands deliverance be released. Don't worry, there will be a loud shout. Once I hear that, it means that God is already visiting those people. There are people here. You can't wait for the end of the service. It's now. It's now. It's now. Father, we release that anointing all over this place. 
all over this place. Yes, it's coming now. It's coming now. It's coming now. It's coming. The touch of the Spirit. Whatever sits as a yoke and an impediment on any life tonight under the sound of my voice is coming under the pressure of the fire and the power of God right now. Help them. Just help them. Just help them. Let chains be broken. 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 Father, tonight glorify your name. I pray that you walk wonders in this place. I pray for the manifestation of signs and wonders. And let your word come forth to bring light, to open every blind eye. To release your wisdom and your power and let there be breakthroughs tonight in jesus name please take your beautiful seat you are the covenant keeping god you are the covenant keeping god. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Acts chapter 16. I want us to be sensitive. I, oh, I feel the anointing very strong. I want everybody to be sensitive tonight. I want us to be very, very expectant. If you are expectant, you will be sensitive for the move of the Spirit on your life. You came for an encounter. If you came for a service, you already have one. But if you came because you know that the God of Jacob never calls anyone to seek him in vain, then God will meet you at the point of your needs. The Lord told me that while I teach tonight, before we begin to pray, the eyes of some of us here will be open. There are some of us here that are under, you are anointed, you are gifted, you are born again, you are graced, but you are under certain kinds of limitations that the enemy has placed, but you are not aware of it. As the word of God comes forth tonight, your eyes will be open. The Bible says he broke the bread and their eyes were open. Please be more on strings today. Thank you, sir. Oh, Jesus. Acts chapter 16. Mm. Praskiva. Nova Hakaba to Boca de Yabacami of Uska Zibro Hotokomba la Grati Mescuma Valija Prahas Kavia. God is already walking. God is already walking. It takes the eyes of faith to see. The Spirit of God is telling me to prophesy right now. That whatever my father has not planted shall be uprooted is a word for somebody God is uprooting everything that the enemy has planted he's uprooting he's uprooting he's uprooting he's uprooting he's uprooting he's uprooting no don't worry don't say amen again just receive he's uprooting is uprooting. I see the angels of the Lord digging the ground and bringing out stuff. 
whatever was planted by witchcraft whatever was hidden in any life here by the enemy that has in, impeded your advancement is being uprooted now and as i say that i sense the fire of god being released on this hall right now i just saw the fire like a wave passed he's uprooting whatever has not been planted by him is uprooting over every darkness you are causing light to shine from darkness you are brooding over every darkness you are causing light to shine from the is uprooting i see the fire of god touching two people now 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 and there are things that are coming out of your life things that have been long standing that have been long overdue don't worry it will happen now i, I, I saw that fire right now on just two people I don't know why God is beginning like this. I want to go ahead to teach, but there are people whose cases are emergency. Father, let that fire fall on them now. On them now. There are two of them. There are two of them. There are two of them. And the years of stagnation, the Lord is saying, is coming to an end. 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 It's coming to an end. That's it. It's coming to an end. 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 Spirit of the sovereign God. Come and make your presence known within the glory of the living God. Spirit of the sovereign God, come and make Right now, I see the Lord anointing certain people. I don't know how many they are, but I'm seeing two people. And it says this anointing is to equip you for the ministry of deliverance. It's coming on you now. It's coming on you. Wild fire of the Holy Ghost, such as you cannot stand. It's coming on you. It says, for you are my battle axe and my weapon of war. And with you, I will smite in pieces the nations. Holy Ghost, touch them. It's an anointing for deliverance. Altars will bow to you. Chains will be broken at your command. it takes sensitivity to participate with the ministry of the spirit god can tell you when you come teach and then pray and when you come god may decide to start moving you have to be sensitive to follow the wind of the spirit as he moves for those of us that are not informed about this kind of ministry i'd like to apology apologize to you this is what we call the ministry of signs and wonders. From now till the end of this meeting, there will be literal manifestations of the Spirit of God. Don't be offended or be surprised if you see people going down under the anointing, screaming, because I sense a very strong activity of angels. As I'm talking now in the spirit realm, my eyes is open and I just see things like waves just moving all across this place. It's called the demonstration of the spirit. Paul said, my speech and my preaching was not in the words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of spirit and of power. 
so that your faith will not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of God. So there will be impartations of every kind, deliverance is happening. Some of you will be having visionary encounters, what I'm teaching, even in the course of the prayer. Some of you will be here and the Spirit of God will take you in the realm of the Spirit to certain places and things will happen. Things will happen that will lead to your victory and your breakthrough tonight. He said, by an outstretched arm, I will bring them out of bondage. If you can't just sit down, Acts chapter 16. There's somebody here. I just felt it on my eyes now. I see the Lord anointing somebody here on your eyes. And I see the Lord, for one of you, restoring the gift of vision. And I see the other person, the Lord is imparting to you. And for this person, you will feel it like heat, very strong. He's imparting to you what I call the gift of discerning of spirits. As I'm saying it, it's happening right now very strong I could feel it on my eyes God is restoring the gift of visions your eyes will be opened again you will no longer be blind you will begin to see you will have access to things that are not given to the eyes of men he says for eyes have not seen nor ears heard neither has it entered the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened. Every door that has been shut over your life is opening today. I say it again. Every door that has been shut, not one, not two, every door is opening tonight. He says, and the doors were open, and everyone's chains were loosed. Everyone's chains were loosed. Now, I want you to, I will teach briefly on what I will call, I looked for the title, I couldn't get, so let's just call it the Ministry of Deliverance. Maybe in the month of April, we will come back and have a series on deliverance. So, but let's just, for the sake of what God wants to do tonight, establish a premise. It's a ministry of deliverance. In the verse where we read in particular about the word foundations, that's Acts chapter 16, verse 26, I believe. We know the story, so I won't bother you with the story. I want to pick out some things from this place the bible says that there was an earthquake while paul and silas were praying and singing hymns i believe that those hymns that they sang were not rehearsed the bible says that they prayed and then they sang there is a dimension of prayer you enter into and the holy spirit begins to give birth to something in your spirit it can be a song it can be a scripture. It can be joy and rejoicing. Don't think it is an emotional expression. That is what happens when the Spirit of God gives birth. And the Bible says whatever is born of God is what will overcome. That song, as you see, is a sign that something has been birthed in your spirit. And that's what makes you a victor over that current situation. 
So I believe that in their pain and in their misery, they prayed. Jesus, I feel the anointing very strong. I feel it very strong. God is going to do a lot of things tonight. Oh. A lot of things tonight. Don't just look at me. Let your heart be focused on him. So in their pain and in their misery, they prayed. Just like the Bible says, if anyone is afflicted, let him do what? Let him pray. And in their prayer, I believe they prayed to a point where the Holy Spirit gave birth to a song in their spirit. And that song was a hymn. And they began to sing that hymn. And the ripple effect of that which they had secured spiritually began to transfer. Not free only Paul and Silas. Silently without anything. And in all of those instances, there was no earthquake. The reason is because sometimes when God wants to deliver a nation, when God wants to deliver a people, he takes the vessel, the human vessel that he will use and brings him in the same condition with those people so that that vessel becomes a system of license from earth to heaven for heaven to intervene. It tells me that God was interested in releasing the prisoners, not just Paul and Silas. And the Bible says that there was an earthquake and the foundations of the prison was shaking. Is that how you free a prisoner? By shaking the foundation? No. The foundations. Literally, the foundation was the foundation of the prison upon which the edifice was standing. And those of you who have an understanding in civil engineering or those of you who know a thing or two about building and construction you understand what foundations is all about the strength of a building or an edifice is based on the foundation and if you will build a prison that can be secured enough to hold and restrain criminals then the foundation has to be very strong the building patterns of prisons are different those of you who have stayed in Lagos before, if you have seen Kirikiri Maximum Prison, I think that should be the strongest and the most secured prison in Nigeria. The fence is so high that it's almost a story building. Am I right? Those of you who have stayed in Lagos before. Such that if the sun should rise by six, they may see it there by seven. So think of it, if the fence can be that high, think about the foundation. But the Bible says the foundation of the prison shook. The foundations figuratively will also mean the root cause of problems. The reason why many people don't experience deliverance regardless of prayers, fastings, sacrifices made, seeds sown, hands laid, is not because those things that were done were not scriptural. No, it's not because of that. But it is mostly because the root cause of the problem was not dealt with. The difference between deliverance and every other ministry is that until you get to the root cause of the matter, the person cannot be free. There is always a physical manifestation of a spiritual bondage established in the life of a man that is under the yoke of the devil. It can manifest as an affliction of sickness. It can manifest as an affliction of poverty. It can manifest as an affliction of near success syndrome or lack of opportunities. It can manifest as any form, but don't be deceived. The manifestation you see in the physical is not the problem. In the spirit, there is a foundation. There is something responsible for what you are seeing. And until that foundation is dealt with, the person may fall down and stand up and maybe for a day or two or for a little while experience the absence of those physical manifestations. But after a period of time, because he is still bound spiritually, everything goes back to where it started. And that's the reason why the teaching of deliverance, this is the time where it needs to 
spread across the body of Christ so that believers can know how to tap into the full rights and benefits of their redemption one of the meaning of salvation is deliverance that yes it is true that you are a new creature in Christ but that knowledge is the premise the foundation and the background for God to superimpose that which you now have in the spirit over that which you have in the physical so that everything that has been an impediment in the natural can give way for the reality that is in the spirit to find expression the Bible says the foundations of the prisons there are people going through all kinds of affliction all kinds of yoke and what is responsible for it is what we call foundation somebody say foundations everything that is built has a foundation everything that exists on earth has a foundation for living things and human beings the foundation can be ancestral or territorial ancestral meaning your origin where you come from your lineage god and the devil are very careful to observe this one spiritual truth the power of foundation there is no man in scripture that god introduced please listen very well tonight i beg you don't be distracted there is no man in scripture that god introduced to his generation that God did not first exhume their foundation before introducing them. Every time God will introduce a man or call a man, you will always see this person, the son of this, the son of that. Every time, even Jesus, when he came out from River Jordan and the heavens opened and the spirit descended upon him as a dove, and the voice came, this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased records were open to cross check that statement if it was true you don't believe me read the rest of luke chapter chapter 3 you will see it the bible began to trace his genealogy that he was the son of joseph joseph was the son of jacob jacob was the son of matitiah and he traced him back to adam who was the son of god to verify that that voice spoke true So even in Jesus foundations and that's the reason why one of the basic things that a believer must understand is this teaching on foundations and deliverance otherwise every exploit you will make in life and for the kingdom is at the mercy of what happens to your foundation I said that foundations can be ancestral or can be territorial when God created the earth, he told the first man to multiply all over the earth. And take my word for this, if you are a good student of the Bible, God did not destroy the earth in the flood. That's not what your Bible says. The Bible says God destroyed the inhabitants of the earth. That's what he told Noah. He said, for I'm about to destroy all the inhabitants of the earth and all flesh and life not the earth do you understand that that means that the curse that God mentioned to the ground in the garden is still holding based on that yes or no he said cross be the ground for your sake and you will toil on it but it will only yield to you thistles And so after Noah was preserved, when you read Genesis chapter 9 and 10, the Bible begins to tell you how people began to multiply again. And they were divided by race. And not just by race, but by geographical locations. The Bible says it very well in Genesis 10, verse 10 there. It speaks about their territories, their locations. So foundations are also territorial and from that time when men divided to different territories everything they began to do began to affect the ground where they came from and as long as anybody it doesn't matter how many years later as long as you come from that place you have a physical connection to that place 
and God who is a God of territory will not negate that fact and so it doesn't matter whether you were born in London or Australia if you came from Onicha one way or the other in your dreams you will see Onicha because that's where you came from and everything that the people who were existing there before you came everything that your ancestors did then The ground will take record of it. I hope you know the Bible tells us that the ground takes record. When Abel's blood was spilled, the Bible says, God told Cain, he said, for the voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. That means the deeds of men are recorded by the ground to yield either a blessing or a curse. The Bible says righteousness exalts a nation but sin is a reproach that means in a territory if people are governed by righteousness and they live for God the ground is commanded to bless them God told Noah he said I will bless the ground for your sake for your sake that means he had a covenant with God and on the strength of that covenant the ground will produce for Noah and his descendants on the strength of that I don't have time to show you scriptures to support this foundations foundations there are certain afflictions there are certain predicaments and problems that are associated with certain territories with certain geographical locations just in the same way that there are certain blessings allocated to certain regions and locations there are places where you go that if any old man dies, they must bury other people with him. And as a result of that, death is rampant in that place. There are places where you go to that are riverine. And because the forefathers lack knowledge, they lack the knowledge of God who created the earth. And they lack the knowledge of the fact that God gave man dominion. They went to seek for help from demons, from deities, from those waters. And on the strength of that, covenants were enacted. And this covenant holds sway over the inhabitants of that place. And anybody that will proceed, even if you came 50 generations later, doesn't stop it. That's the reason why in Isaiah, 500 years before Jesus was born, Isaiah saw what foundations would do to Jesus. And he captured it in chapter 53, verse 2. He says, He shall be like a root out of dry ground. He shall be like a tender plant and a root out of dry ground. This is an expression you need to understand. If a ground is dry, it means nothing can bear fruit. Nothing can grow. Nothing can yield. So if the Bible is saying it shall be like a tender plant, if you have seen a place that is affected by drought, you see that the plants are almost dying. They shrink and they are almost dying. That's what it means when they say it shall be like a tender plant. The other word for tender means weak. So Isaiah saw 500 years later and said, Ah, this is the son of God. Oh. But it looks like his life is being affected by certain things that are associated to his foundation. And maybe that is the reason why Jesus, though the Son of God, though the Word of God, the Bible even proved to us that Jesus had every potential to get into ministry and do all God had called him to do. Even at the age of 12, he was answering questions that the doctors were asking, doctors of the law, and he was asking them questions they couldn't answer. So it was proof enough that at the age of 12, Jesus had enough to step into his divine calling but foundations were fighting and so the bible is silent about 18 years when we get to heaven we would ask god why he waited for 18 years could that also be the reason why it took david 13 years before he got to the throne why would god anoint a man at 17 and wait for 13 years could it be as a result of foundations? Maybe. Because if you are a student of scripture, the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 38, Judah did something. Judah, the son of Jacob, did something. He got married to a woman. She gave birth to three children. 
the first born got married and died the second one born married the woman of the first and died the third judah refused to give to her and then the lady out of vengeance went and disguised herself like a prostitute and judah slept with her how do you sleep with your daughter-in-law so incest was introduced maybe that's the reason why even at childbirth the woman had contention her life was under threat because of that act of judah satan gained access into that bloodline so much so that when she was giving back to twins the bible says the first the first one put his hand outside though they tied his hand with a ribbon he put his hand inside and then the other one came out the fight started from there and it took 10 generations before god could come back to judah maybe that's why god had to go to benjamin to pick Saul and make him you see let me tell you it is only when you study the bible from a prophetic and a pattern perspective that you can see and read between the lines there are things that it looks like god is silent about he's not silent about it is a wisdom that is hidden so that men can seek and find out and in the finding out you will know what is responsible for why you are where you are it was not a mistake god knew what he was doing he left judah was it not him that said the scepter shall not depart from judah not the lord giver for he left judah for 10 generations and he came to david and to show you that foundations were still fighting david all through david's life lost was a problem all through his life david killed 200 philistines for one woman if not me i won't want that one i don't want give me any other thing give me riches Saul so said just kill give me the first king of 100 philistines i'll give you my daughter and because there was lost in the bloodline your eyes are being opened back that's the reason why when he became king he could not control it and Bathsheba came into the picture solomon was born lost continued in the bloodline absalom drove his father away and slept with all his wives in front of israel foundations the bible says for them to know that david was dead they put a young virgin near him that was how critical his lust was it was not his fault foundations somebody did something in the past and even though god was the god of all gods there are things that god doesn't superimpose because there are patterns he has set for creation to work with because if god will come again to visit he will follow the same patterns for them to know that he's dead they put a woman there and when the woman was not touched they knew david was dead you know the story you know the rest of the story solomon one thousand wives somebody say foundations let me talk to you a little about foundations today because i'm talking to a group of people some of which don't believe these things and most times when people the unbelief is as a result of ignorance most times don't blame people when they don't believe they are ignorant of the truth i told you last last week that it is lack of understanding that creates unbelief And so whether territorial or ancestral there must be something within the line that is responsible for the predicament for the short-circuited success of the people around why can this problem not just go after so many prayers anytime you have prayed on an issue and it's, it's it looks like the issue is resisting you you may be dealing with foundations it's not like the devil cannot go he should go but possibly there is something that keeps him there jesus crossed over to the other side saw a madman rebuked the spirit and the spirit refused to go and then jesus asked the question who are you he says my name is legion in other words this territory was given to me 
you can't just come and dispose me anyhow it was given to me legally i own it you don't believe me that place where jesus met the man was called god ara or the god arenes genesis 49 when jacob was blessing his children one of them was called god and here was the blessing for god he said a troop shall overcome god but he shall overcome at last the word troop there in the hebrew is the same word for troop in greek the word troop in greek is legion and so jesus thousands of years later went to a place called god arranged and he met a man whose name was what truth somebody say foundations i'm talking slowly because as i'm talking the eyes of many of us are opening you don't even need much explanation again you can begin to trace why this thing is like this i come from a lineage of preachers by the grace of god my father is a pastor is alive a reverend well studied in theology my grandfather died 106 he's a pastor that's how i know that i will not die early huh because there is long life and longevity in my foundation so yeah if you have been praying for long life and death is still trying to attack you come and sow into my life i'm just joking okay but it's true it's not just a joke it's true it doesn't matter what the devil throws there is longevity in the lineage so i'll be here till i'm done with my work so you would think that when my when my, my grandfather his father which is my great grandfather was a wizard in our clan i was told that he was the chief wizard he was so powerful and strong that if other witches are against you and are tormenting you just come to him and report it's like the police station for witches come and report to him they said he will do something in the night and arrest them they said he can so arrest them that he will hang them on the air flying the only way you know is that in the morning you will just see people bringing sack of corn gary to his house oh yeah they are coming to bribe release our member so my grandfather who was his firstborn when the missionaries came to plateau state newly gave his life to christ under them and they took him and began to mentor him he was one of the first evangelists indigenous evangelists to bring the church cooking to plateau south now you think with all that heritage i should just come and uh, all is well 2013 i was praying and fasting four days and one of those nights the lord opened our eyes to a vision and we saw altars of clay and god said deal with that and the first question i asked was how come i thought that the battles ended with my grandfather and the remaining ones was finished with my father but you see it's not by that too it is the extent of priesthood that has been exercised it could be that that man walked so much in darkness that his covenants and sacrifice were stronger than my father and my grandfather put together that's why you must be deliberate about your serving God because you are not just serving God to receive blessing. You are entering a covenant with God that will affect generations to come. The Bible says in Psalms 89, in verse 20, it says, My covenant will I not break, neither will I alter the word that has gone forth from my lips. God is concerned about inheritance. Even in the New Testament, read Ephesians chapter 1, verse verse 11 and verse 14 it speaks of the inheritance of the saints that god has prepared for us men that had walked with god and exited into glory it is the strength of their sacrifices their covenant that has produced an inheritance for us and god says we are partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light what do you think that meant That's the reason why even denominations, God is concerned about founding fathers over denomination. A denomination may miss it, but the covenant that God had with their fathers remains perpetually. 
God is a covenant keeping God and he said that will be his name perpetually for all generations let's not use New Testament revelation and soil that one no they are all predicated on the same premise so even in the New Testament the Bible says we were saved in Christ but the Bible says we were saved so that we may receive the blessings of who of who Abraham was Abraham there where Jesus died was Abraham greater than Jesus Jesus said before Abraham was I am but because God is conscious about foundations you know why the Jews are prospering the Jewish nation do you want to know why they prosper anywhere you take a Jew to even to Sambisa they will prosper in Sambisa the Nigeria will become interested in Sambisa even if the Jew is not born again as far as that person is a Jew and is learned in the ways of of Moses the laws of the Jews he will prosper anywhere anytime you know why God said it in Isaiah 51 from verse 1 and 2 he said look to your father he was talking to the Jews he said look to your father Abraham whom I called he said I called him alone and I blessed him and made him great that's the reason why every Jew born they are taught about their father Abraham they are taught about the inheritance the covenant he has with God they are learned in the ways of their fathers so even till rapture that covenant keeps speaking that's why even in hell Abraham had a portion it was called paradise because of the covenant that God made with one man some of us are here and what you are suffering could be the covenant that a man generations ago made with darkness maybe three four generations ago somebody so served satan and he consecrated himself and he seed to satan and now five generations later you have been born you are new a, a new creature in christ you are born again yes but satan understands the law of covenant and he has taken that covenant to god to the courts of heaven and say god you can't release her why because her forefather made a covenant with me and the bible calls god a righteous judge god is so righteous in his judgment that if satan gets it correct god will give it to him you don't know you, you don't believe job chapter one you see it there have you seen my servant job have you considered my servant job that there is none righteous like him on the face of the earth satan says you know because of how you have blessed him and put a hedge around him remove your protection it will cause you to your face and god say you probably have a point go ahead if you understand these dimensions of god you will know how to pray some prayers that will undo some things people don't see overnight miracle not because they are not anointed but because they don't know the laws that sponsor it so when a man stands and says in 24 hours you'll get a miracle he's not wishing he's not well wishes there is a law there's something that governs it that's how righteous god is that's the reason why god knows that that is a weakness to him so he advised his children he said that men ought always to pray because if you are not praying satan keeps coming to me with accusations against you and if i deny him when he is right factually i will no longer be god because he says i the lord i keep it justice judgment and equity oh may god open our eyes to know him foundations foundations but the bible says there was an earthquake and the foundations of the prison was shaken that means god went to trouble the root cause of the problem god went to confront the very root of that situation tonight what god will do is release his power to go down to your roots your roots can be three generations before you your roots can be five generations before you your roots can be back in your village something may have been buried in the ground 
and it doesn't matter how skillful you are anywhere you go that thing keeps crying you can change location but the earth is still the same that's the reason why you don't need to go to the mountain for God to answer you you can pray anywhere and God answers you you know why because it's still the same earth he said oh thou that hears prayers unto you shall all flesh foundation satan desires to bring people into all kinds of captivity there are different different kinds of captivity different kinds of yoke he can come through the yoke of witchcraft and wizardry witchcraft is when a person stands as a medium between the demonic spirit realm and the physical and then permits a spirit a demon spirit to come in and cause harm to a person so what happens in witchcraft is that the spirit and his power partners with the wickedness and the license of that individual the spirits want to destroy but they don't have license on earth because they are spirits so they need a human being that has license as long as that person is wearing this body it doesn't matter the social class it doesn't matter the the height it doesn't matter the family name as long as they are wearing human body you now see that because there was no human body for satan to use to enter the garden he came through the serpent as long as you have flesh spirit will want to partner with you but you see just the way god works with your will and your zeal satan works with your wickedness and greed so the reason why witchcraft prospers in certain villages is because the person has wicked intentions so your wickedness becomes the energy level for that spirit to come in and cause harm that's why the bible says in exodus chapter 22 verse 19 what suffer not a witch to live i know the prayers you want to pray is it exodus 22 19 or 21 19 i know that i know you say Let's live in peace. The Bible says, love your enemies. Don't quote scripture out of context. Because where Jesus was quoting, he said, love your enemies, feed them, clothe them. Paul quoted the same. It was in Proverbs. He said, for by so doing, you are hitting coals of fire. What is coals of fire? Judgment. <laughs> Jesus knows why he says, be good to your enemies. Love them. You know why? Because why you are good to them, he has, he now, who is standing as your advocate in heaven you know that satan is called the accuser of the brethren that accuses the brethren day and night before god so they are doing wickedness to you but you are paying back with good what you are doing is as jesus is standing in that courtroom on your behalf you are giving him evidence to present a case and win the devil so that the judgment can be tilted against you don't think god just wants you to preserve the enemy now lie you God is not a man that he should lie. If he said, suffer not a witch to live in Exodus, he didn't change it. So witchcraft is one of the ways. Occultism is a step higher where people sell their souls. That's the covenant. That's the level of covenant with darkness. At that point, it becomes very difficult to be born again, except you have a divine encounter from Jesus except god steps in in his sovereignty to save you because you have loaned your soul to the devil then you now become a human altar upon which the kingdom of darkness which is will come to draw power from you it's just like a believer and one who is called to the fivefold ministry divination is another aspect divination now, satan knows that as human beings we are always in search of knowledge so satan will want to feed on that appetite divination the word for divination is the same as the word python the snake called python and one thing about the snake python is that for it to destroy its victim it goes around the victim and wrap the victim as at that time the victim doesn't even know what is happening when it has when it has gone around the victim it begins to stretch itself 
And that's exactly what divination is. Because of our lust and our human appetite to want to know, people begin to consult charms. Call it whatever you call it, mala. In case you have a friend who has consulted mala, tell them that they are possessed already. They need deliverance. Because you call it consulting. But let me tell you, it's called worship. It's not consulting. When a man goes to God, the Bible says, if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and turn and seek my face. When a man seeks God, what he's doing is he's paying obeisance to God. He's telling God that, see, I have realized that you are sovereign, that you have all power, and I have come to you. I have surrendered myself to you so that you can help me. And spirits don't just do deals for nothing. You surrender yourself so that I can help you with my power. What are you giving me in exchange? Your soul. So for every time a man consults native doctors, charms, palm reading, crystal ball gazing, they look at your palm, they say they want to see future. The last time you went to the village, somebody, you met an old man, they say, ah, he's a baba in this place, very wise man. He said, my son, come. Then you gave the baba money, he said, ah, come, let me bless you. Then he opened your hand and he was looking at your hand. He's transferring demons. Because the only route to the realm of the spirit that God permits is the Holy Ghost. Any other route is wrong. That's the reason why witchcraft has entered into the church. And you see all kinds of gimmicks put together. I'm not against the use of omens, water, oil, and all of that. But when that becomes the norm, that is church witchcraft being practiced. So that the faith of the people can be removed from God to those things. And that's all Satan wants. There are different levels of bondages. Principalities and powers are there. Spirits that can hold sway over an entire region and territory. It is possible that an entire city can be bewitched. It is possible that an entire city can be under the shackles of the devil. The Bible says in Acts chapter 8 that there was a man called Simon the sorcerer. And the Bible says he bewitched the city of Samaria with his witchcraft. The entire city was blind. Look up here. Whether they were rich, they were poor. Whether they knew the law or not, an entire city was bewitched by one man. That's the reason why you find out that people from certain tribe or from certain dialect or, or language, there is a way they behave. That we have learned to associate behavioral patterns with certain language and that i'm not in any way talking down on anyone i'm showing you the root cause every person is blessed by god but i'm showing you the root cause of it there is a reason those spirits create they formulate a policy that becomes a mindset and then through their demons they begin to tempt people in that territory to yield through their lust to those mindsets. And once you can get a man to think in a way, you have control of him without his knowledge. You don't need to handcuff a man to control him. Just get him to think in a way. He will follow you without him knowing. As a man think get in his heart. That's the reason why even as Christians, people can be demonized. Satan can get you to think in a way. And that thought pattern will bring, it will secure a limitation on your life for a very long time. For instance, Satan will make you watch a video online where the person is castigating ministers for one thing or two that they did. Say, so see all of these preachers and pastors and prophets everywhere. Forget about these people, they are all scam. Listen, man will fail you. I watched one and I was just laughing at him. He said, man, I don't watch them, but I was just, I, I, the video came, I was just laughing at his foolishness. He was saying that don't believe man, men will fail you. In my mind, I say, including you, because you're a man. He said, they are liars. I said, that means what you're saying is a lie, because you're a man too. They tell you, just believe God, don't go to church, just stay and worship your God. Do you know that that is, is witchcraft? That's a system of darkness to make believers think in a way 
that God does not use human vessels in form of men of God to bless. Sometimes Satan can make you despise the person that God should bless you through. And for 10 years, you just, somebody who is supposed to be this in your life, you exchange that person because of a mindset. That's why Paul wrote to a spirit-filled church. He said, oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? So it's possible. It's possible. I'm talking to you about prisons now. I've shifted from foundations to prisons because prisons were where these guys were held trapped. Different ways by which Satan enslaves men and keeps men in bondage. As I'm talking, I want you to search your life. If you see any similitude of what I'm saying, then when we rise up to pray, I want you to pray passionately because some things must live our life this night. I said some things must live our life this night. Like the tribe where I come from, we are great people, warriors, but there's something about our anger. If you meet somebody who's typically from my tribe and you meet them expressing their anger, you will think rapture has come. I'm telling you, with all due respect to everybody from the Tarok nation, I love the Tarok nation, but we are very, our anger, I think it is demonic. You know why? Because I've seen it in my people. So when I began to deal with this issue of foundations, I took this issue of anger to God. I said, now lie. Now lie. Deal with it. Because that anger will make you drive all the people around you that God has sent to help you and bless you. And then you'll be wondering why you are working so much and helping people, but they are not responding. They want to help you or respond to you, but there's a foundation that is responsible for something in your life and on the strength of that thing you are held in a prison of limitation are we ready to pray tonight but the bible says in acts where we read chapter 16 verse 26 that the foundations of the prison was shaken and then it goes on to say that immediately all the doors were open all the doors there are two things that will happen when a man experiences two true deliverance i say this and then we'll pray when a man truly has been delivered from the shackles of the enemy when a man has been delivered from the powers of foundations when a man has been brought out of the prison that the enemy has really kept in because there are prisons so there are spiritual prisons there are spiritual prisons what is a prison? A place that, number one, restricts your movement. Number two, limits your activity. Isn't it? That means it is possible for a man to be in a prison physically. He can be working from January to December, earning salary, but he doesn't rise financially. As a proof to you that it's not how much you earn that determines your worth. Oh, somebody didn't hear that one. Let me explain more on prisons before I go on. Some of us, our prisons, with due respect, are dreams that you have. Why is it that when you come to a particular season of your life where something is about to break through for you, sometimes you even feel that there's a breakthrough coming. Sometimes you even saw it in your dream. You woke up that morning with a dream. People were dashing you money, but the whole of that day ended. Nobody showed you favor. And then you say, well, it was just a dream. I didn't watch him too much. Who taught you that? Dream is a technology that is as real as this. Everything you see in a dream is real. Including if it was a film you watched that you were seeing in a dream. What you are seeing is that you are being told that it is what you have given your mind to that is becoming your reality. Because when you feed your mind with film, and I'm not against film, and I'm not for film. When you feed your mind with all those films, you keep watching, 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 and you see that you are always dreaming about these things. What is happening to you is that because of what your mind is exposed to, your imagination is now creating your own customized reality based on the possibilities trapped in that film. And God bless you in that film, the actor died. Or God bless you in that film, the protagonist lady, they robbed her of her husband. 
oh this is how these things happen and years later the lady cannot get married somebody comes even goes to knock door but after knocking door he returns no more certain dreams just come spirits come to visit people in dreams i know people who have come under afflictions based on what they saw in a dream i know somebody who's, who told me she saw in a dream somebody was injecting something into her and from that day she became hiv positive you say it's a dream but right? how about spirit husbands and spirit wives that come in dreams maybe in april we'll do a series on deliverance people who will come to sleep with you and you know their technology is so different that they don't even have to sleep with you once they can do anything in that dream that arouses you sexually it's as good as the act done that's the reason why jesus said who i tell you the truth whosoever commits adultery with a woman in his heart has done what satan understands covenant he understands that god is a god of covenants and he knows that one of the strongest covenants that has been established on earth is the covenant of marriage because god formalized the institution called marriage and sex was supposed to be the token of the sealing of that covenant so what will satan do pervert it or pervert it so if satan wants a woman to go childless or wants a lady to stay without a husband this is what he will do can i have two three people one lady two guys let me show you something don't worry we are going to pray bondages will be broken but i'm explaining these things so that our eyes can be open thank you i want the two men to stand here just stand here sir yes you stand here thank you you stay here when god was establishing the covenant of marriage here's what he said he said a man shall leave his father and mother and do what and cleave to his wife and the two shall become what one flesh what one flesh. the two shall become what what one one flesh meaning that the oneness is first of all in their spirit and then it is cemented in the flesh through that union of sex that's the reason why in first Corinthians chapter 6 Paul likened the union between a believer and the Holy Spirit like the sex that happens between a man and a woman. He said, how shall I take this body of Christ and join it to a harlot? He said, for he that is joined to the Lord is one. It's the same. So this is what Satan will do. This is probably what is responsible for barrenness in many places. I've prayed for, I've been privileged by God to pray for a lot of people in this place and beyond. And I've studied these things again and again because I have had to meet with resistance. Why? And here it is. So this man is supposed to get married to this lady. He has not come into her life, but God had already programmed. But Satan understands that the realm of the spirit is a realm of exchange. That's the reason why God said, I will restore to you the years that the canker woman stole. He said, for your shame, I will give you what? Double. Exchange. As long as you understand the laws of the spirit, you can confirm it. So what Satan will do is, before this man gets into her life, he brings an exchange of a husband in the realm of the spirit. And it can even be so deceptive, you bring a face that she knows so that she is ashamed to even confront the person and say, I saw you in my dream. And then the person comes in the dream and something happens. And the union of covenant has been enacted and sealed through sex. That's the reason why anytime this man wants to come into her life, he is met with resistance. She may even meet him in future. And they are close to getting married. That's when all his business scatters. They gave him the list. It's something he could pay. Why is he finding it difficult? Why is it now that he wants to consummate the marriage that there is no money? It's because there is another husband 
who by reason of, by reason of covenant has taken the wealth that belongs to him if that man is lucky he will survive and go away from her if he's not lucky if you meet a very jealous spirit husband you'll be killed i've seen the ones that will sickness i've seen people who the moment they sleep with their wives or their husbands they become sick something is wrong i'm showing you prisons prisons she got married and as usual she met with her husband but then a day or two days later she had a dream and another man came to her nothing happened no he just came and was standing near me he wanted to touch me but you already felt that feeling that shows that it has been consummated as long as you feel it whether they touch you or not it has happened you need to understand the laws of scripture that breaks it and then one month later is expected that she will be pregnant obviously she even misses her period but when signs of pregnancy are not showing she goes to the hospital and they tell her she has fibroid she's actually pregnant but pregnant not for him pregnant for another man and so the reason why the scan cannot show it as a baby is because it's a spirit the implant of a spirit being in her so it's called fibroid how did he enter your body not you my dear the lord bless you please sit down how about people in ministry he's so anointed mighty man of god and when he goes to sleep anytime god wants to do something mighty through his life a lady will come and meet him and he wakes up from that dream and he feels drained so you are laboring to receive your inheritance spiritually but there's a pipe connected to drain it out we need to break the covenant of any spirit husband and spirit wife in this hall i know some of us will be ashamed but you know what i'm talking about i know you no, 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 no problem you see people who do that remain perpetually bound in deliverance you have to be honest first you have to be humble that's why i say if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves you have to keep title aside and admit that no this is not like my, my life should be something is wrong you'll be humble enough to say father arise and show me mercy who is like him lion and the lamb seated on the throne Mountains bow down and the oceans roll to the Lord of hosts. Who is like him? Lion and the lamb seated on the throne. Mountains bow down. And the oceans roll to the Lord of hosts. Time will fail me to talk about the operation of marine spirit. Come maybe in April or March. We we'll take a series on deliverance. I've done a lot of studies around here. The Lord has shown me a lot of things. I have failed many times and I went back to God and discovered the demonic undertow behind the failure and if you know these things you will discover and know that God surely answers prayers but tonight before we pray the Bible says the prison was opened and the chains of everyone was loose two things that happen as a sign that a man has truly experienced deliverance and then we'll pray number one freedom is regained the Bible said that everyone's chains was loosed. If God wanted to only release Paul and Silas, only their chains would have been loosed. The Bible says everyone. That means when a man experiences deliverance, everything around him will come under the impact of that activity. Is it possible that you are here tonight 
and you come in contact with the power of God and your family, the chains around the people that are connected to you by blood are broken. Yes, it is. God came to free just two people, but he in turn freed everybody. The chains were broken. Freedom is regained. All of a sudden, there is this potential of advancement in your life that has been released. All of a sudden, things begin to happen. Even in your prayers, every time you want to pray before, there is a weakness that fights you. If you are experiencing that, foundation is dealing with you. You need to pray. There are some of us here that have mighty anointings. And Satan knows that if you go to pray, it will be stirred up. So he fights your prayers. You can watch him for three hours and resist sleep. The moment you kneel down to pray, in five minutes you are off. It's like a plane that takes off. Something is wrong. There is a force. Don't think it's natural. Don't say I like sleep. Something is wrong somewhere. Because Satan knows that your destiny is at the, the mercy of that activity. But when their chains were broken, they were free. Number two, the Bible says that all the doors were open. When a man has truly experienced deliverance, opportunities are multiplied. All of a sudden, jobs that you applied for and nobody called you, they begin to call you. The same people you met and they said they couldn't help you will be the ones to come. What will be their excuse? They'll give you a flimsy excuse. Oh, sorry, I didn't know what I was thinking. No, foundation stopped them. Balaam was on his way to go and curse the people of God. The Bible says an angel stood in the way. He didn't see it, but his donkey saw it. So even the people that should help you don't know why they are not helping you. I have seen in my life that there are people I desire to do something for. And all of a sudden, things begin to fight my finances. I said, no, this is not ordinary. At first, I was blaming myself. Sometimes I would even save the money for them. But something will happen that will just take it away or I will forget. As I began to study about these things, the Lord now told me you were dealing with the foundations of those people. It's as if there is a meter in the spirit to check any opportunity that will come and lift this great man or great woman and release their destiny. Check it and fight it. Paul said in 2 Thessalonians, or first rather, he said, I, I, we, we wanted to come to you again and again even I, Paul, 1 Thessalonians 2, 18, he said, but Satan hindered us. The great apostle, he said, Satan hindered us. So the revival program that the Thessalonican church had planned didn't hold. Why? Because Satan hindered. Satan can hinder people from your life. Oh. And when people are hindered, opportunities are closed opportunities are closed. It doesn't matter how smart you are, how intelligent you are, how skillful you are, how good in business you are. You can have all that. Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. But, one but solves everything. His mother called him Jado. Foundation. That's why if you are a lady here, be careful what you say. I'm telling you, married or single. Because your words are having impact on the seed that will be formed in you. I hope you know that the ground that the seed is planted in has a way of affecting the growth of the seed. Some fell on the way. Some fell among thorns. Some fell among rock. Some fell on good ground. The seed that may be sown in you as a lady may be good. But if your womb is already contaminated, and you know many, many ladies are responsible for their, some of these growths you find. It has been proven scientifically. I heard this from a, a, a very senior man of God. That sciences have been able to establish a link between cancer and the words of a person and the belief system of a person. So you just keep saying negative things and you say it's a joke. The Bible says death and life is where? In the power of the tongue. I don't know what's wrong with me. Ah! So this is my own self now. Wow. Those seeds don't die. They go to the future. They go to the future. They go to the future. 
when Mary became pregnant for Jesus, the first person she, she heard was a prophet. The Bible says Elizabeth met her, carrying another prophet. And as soon as they saluted, the spirit came on Elizabeth and she began to prophesy. You now see why all through Jesus' life, he was controlled by prophets. That's the reason why his, his heavens did not open until he went to John, the prophet. say but the doors were open tonight doors are opening for somebody opportunities that were long lost are being restored opportunities that has evaded you will come looking for you he said to give them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness this is the ministry of the anointing the anointing comes to exercise authority against the yokes of the enemy and bring deliverance and it operates by the ministry of a prophet it comes to bring restoration but it can also come to bring creation that means when the demonic undertone has been lifted what was not there can be created that's when the cliche what god cannot do does not exist will really manifest in your life the Bible says the doors, all the doors open. Is it possible? What kind of jailbreak is that? But when true deliverance happens, marital door can open the same time with job. It can open with the same time with accommodation. And God can then bring the three of them in one month. That's why he said in the book of Joel chapter 2, he said for he has caused to come upon you the former rain. And it will cause to come upon you the former and the latter rain in the same moon. Joel 2, 23. And in verse 24, it says, Your vat will, be, will overflow with oil and your bands will be filled with wheat. When doors are open, opportunities in their multiplied form will come. Is somebody ready to pray tonight? Please stand up on your feet. We are going to pray. Can you in one minute lift your voice and bless the Lord for what you have heard? Just thank Him for the light, the knowledge that you have released, you received, the understanding that you have gotten. If truly you have learned some things and your eyes have been opened, and you say, Lord, thank you. The Bible says, true knowledge shall the righteous be delivered. Because now that your eyes are opened, it becomes very easy for God to break the impediment. Lift your voice and bless him. Lift your voice and give him praise. Le proso benadam predo sute kapala gom preda vada binata ziki bine kabura benata le baban zevina da glory to your name in Jesus name. Now please, while we are up standing, we are going to pray. But before we pray, I feel like I should do this so that everybody will participate in the prayer session. Amen. I'm going to take the altar call first while we are all standing. You know, when we take the altar call, there is no movement anywhere so that we can respect the presence of God and honor those who need to give their life to Christ. The greatest prison is the prison of sin. Sin is sponsored by what we call the mystery of iniquity. What is iniquity? Is any system of rebellion against God. The moment Adam fell, that became a nature in man. Just like holiness is the nature of God, iniquity is the nature of man. That's why it is said that it is, it is human to err, but it is divine to forgive. That's why it doesn't matter whether you have been good all your life, as long as you are not saved, the nature of sin still exists in you. And because of that, death has permission. Death simply means separation from the life of God. Separation from the grace and the power that redemption brings. Please, no moving anywhere. Let's just be upstanding. There are people here who your greatest deliverance is salvation. You need to be born again. You don't know Jesus. And there are also those who are here. Your Christian life has been up today down tomorrow you cannot explain for any reason 
You're on fire today, tomorrow, next tomorrow. On the fourth day, you are back to Babylon. It's like you keep going back into those bondage. And the thing about sin is that it will make it will listen to me. Sin will trigger pride in a man. Pride makes you ashamed for yourself, ashamed for your reputation. And that means the person would want to hide these things. And the Bible says, He that covereth his sins shall not what prosper. He said, But he that confesseth and forsaketh them shall find mercy. The reason why a lot of people are held bound is because they are not humble enough to admit that they need help. I want to give this opportunity. If you are here and you need to say yes to Jesus, probably for your first time, or maybe you need to rededicate your life again because you don't know what has happened to your Christian experience. You are down. You don't feel that connection with God again. And all of a sudden, your desires in the flesh are beginning to be triggered again. I want you, wherever you are, don't just raise your right hand. I want you to march to the front and meet me. There's no need to be ashamed. Once sin is checked out, deliverance becomes possible. The receipt and the license that Satan still has over families is iniquity. He says, the hand of the Lord is not short that it will save you. Neither is his ears deaf that he will hear you. He said, but your sin, he was talking to his children. He was not talking to unbelievers. He said, your sin, there are people who come to church. I don't mean to condemn, but this is your day of salvation. There are people who come to church and follow the motion, but they are not saved. Their choices reveal that they are not regenerated. The true change that comes. They may even fake speaking in tongues, but they are truly not changed. Because there is something that happens to a man when he becomes born again. He truly becomes a new creature. All of a sudden, the desires of the flesh are subdued. And the desire to please God is in him. If you are here tonight and you are listening to me or online following. If you are online, you will pray the prayer with us. But if you are here and you say, Apostle, I don't care. With what I've heard tonight, I'm no longer ashamed. I'm going to say yes to Jesus. I'm going to rededicate my life afresh. I'm tired of jokes. I'm tired of running in cycles. I mean business. I don't care whether I've been a deacon in my church or whether I'm a choir member and my choir members are here with me. I don't care whether people know me as a pastor. Paul was a learned scholar in the law. But when he met Jesus, he was humble to admit that he didn't know anything. Wherever you are, I will count to 15. I want you to come out so that we can pray for you right now. And as they come, please celebrate God for them. One. Two. Three. Say no. Rebel against the enemy. Four. Five. Don't allow addiction to hold you back. Don't allow loss to keep you back. Anything that makes you ashamed of it, that's the nature of sin. Try to hold you back from your true deliverance. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. If you can hear me, keep coming. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Some of you are right now sit at your seat and you feel convinced. Your heart is breaking you to come out. Join them. that Simon the sorcerer the Bible says he was baptized but people thought he had repented but he was still an unbeliever here's what the Bible said that when Peter came and Simon told him sell me this power Peter said you have no part amongst us he said for your heart in your heart is the root of bitterness one of the greatest deception we have in church these days is that people grow in church and think they are born again. No. And that's why brothers and sisters that are out here, I salute you for your courage. I thank you for damning any consequence whatsoever to come out. And I want you to mean this prayer as we pray because God is about to regenerate you afresh. A new life is about to come into you and an old nature is about to die. 
and the new nature coming in you gives you victory over sin please put your right hand on your chest and repeat these words after me say lord jesus say it very well lord jesus i come to you today i repent of my sin i forsake my old ways i believe that you died and rose again for my sake and therefore I receive eternal life into my heart and I thank you because today I am saved in Jesus name father your word says whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved Lord I pray for these ones and I declare by the authority of Scripture that their sins are forgiven I declare that they are born again and I pray in the name of Jesus that from today they will walk in victory over sin, over Satan, over death, over hell and the grave. Your new life in them will teach them to know you and to follow you. And your presence will reside in them all the days of their lives. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you. Um, I want you to follow the wa lady waving behind. Just look behind. There's a lady waving. Follow her one after the other. And our officers will attend to you very briefly in two minutes and bring you back for the prayers. Can we celebrate God for them? You need to have a passion for soul. Somebody should help him too. Somebody should help take him and then bring him back again. Keep clapping. They are not done. If you understand salvation, you will know what has happened. hallelujah are we ready to pray the bible says i will call upon the lord who is worthy to be saved psalms 18 verse 3 so shall i be saved from my enemies deliverance only comes when men call upon god pride makes men prayerless but if you are here tonight and you are standing for yourself and for your family when we get to pray, I want you to cry passionately. Last week, I told you that anything you cannot travail for, you cannot lay claim on. There is such a thing as desperate prayers. The Bible says the effectual and fervent prayer. It's not a gentleman kind of prayer. It's a prayer that tells God, it's either I walk out of here free or I remain bound. In the next two minutes, I want you to open your mouth and cry and say, Lord, visit me today in the name of Jesus. Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying? I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. I call upon your name, O God. Visit me. Visit me. Visit me today. I've heard your word. And I place a demand for your power. I place a demand for your heart. Rapapale, <laughs> We thank you for lifting. We thank you for lifting. We thank you for lifting. I hear. 
tonight I'll lead us to take some prayers and then after that I'll minister next prayer the Bible says Bartimaeus cried out to Jesus he says son of David have mercy he was a Jew he was a seed of Abraham but he knew that he needed divine intervention if you are humble enough I want you to raise your voice like Bartimaeus and cry son of David have mercy on me have mercy on me. Mercy overcomes judgment. Mercy brings divine intervention. Mercy brings restoration. Mercy brings judgment against the enemy. Can you cry for yourself and your family? Have mercy. 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 Have Listen, we are going to pray that prayer again, but for our family. You are going to cry and say, Jesus, have mercy on my family. 
I want you to stand as a point of contact. Stand as an intercessor. Invoke the mercy of God. Invoke the mercy of the highest. Have mercy on my family. Have mercy on my father's house. Have mercy on my mother's house. Have mercy on my family. Let the plague of darkness be broken. Let the reign of terror be over. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. We are going to deal with altars now. Listen. Listen. Just listen. Get the knowledge and pray. We are going to, in fact, all through this week, God has been waking me up at night to deal with altars. To deal with altars. To deal with altars. There are altars that have been raised. I taught you last week that altars are systems of legitimization. Systems that license the operation of spirits. It is on the base of altars that covenants are established. That something will perpetually continue for generation unto the next generation in a family. Somebody raised an altar for that. The Bible said in the book of 1 Kings chapter 13 about a king whose name was Jeroboam. The kingdom of Israel had been divided, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. But the children of Israel in the northern kingdom were still going to Jerusalem to sacrifice unto the God of Israel. But because Jeroboam had evil in his heart, he said, if I allow these people, they will soon run around Rehoboam and he will become their king. He said, what I'll do is I'll raise an altar here. And the Bible says he raised an altar and he made a, 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 an image. There are altars of darkness raised in our families. You may not see it, but as you pray, some of you, will, God will open your visions tonight. As you pray this prayer, some of you will be taken in visions to your villages. Some of you to your father's compound. Some of you to different places where altars were raised. And that is what is licensing the kingdom of darkness to come and ravage people around you and including your life. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every evil altar. Every evil altar. That has been speaking. That I've been speaking against my life. Against my life. Against my family. Against my family. 
knowingly or unknowingly knowingly or knowingly be destroyed by fire be destroyed by fire in the name of jesus Amen. So open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray let the altars be crushed let the altars be destroyed altars of darkness altars of witchcraft altars of occultism altars of wickedness altars of poverty altars of greed Oh, <laughs> Having my knowledge, it is strong. 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 Number two, say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now listen. Listen to me. This prayer you want to pray. Two nights, was it two nights ago? I shared with you that I woke up and the Spirit of God told me to pray this prayer. Please listen, we are going to pray. I woke up about two nights ago. I was praying and I was caught up in the spirit and I began to hear whispers. And the Lord told me these are the whispers of spirits. And he told me, are you aware that transactions are being made over my people this night? And then he told me, this is the prayer. Every evil transaction made against me on my behalf be cancelled in the name of Jesus. Listen, listen. 
for the first time, God repeated, he dictated it to me. He said, pray it like this. I prayed until I stopped hearing those voices. Are you ready to pray? There are transactions. Transactions are contracts. There are covenants sealed between men and spirit. Please listen. Do you know that the children of Israel did not know that Balaam and Balak were standing on the mountain raising altars to curse them? You can be sleeping in the night and there are things done. There are things do, there, that are being orchestrated to fortify the affliction, to fortify the bondage. But every evil transaction that has been made or is being made will be cancelled. And in line with that prayer, let God return to the wicked that which they have done. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every evil transaction, every evil, evil transaction, transaction made on my behalf, made on my behalf, made against me, made against me, be cancelled, be cancelled in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And let everyone say, everyone, everyone, whether man or spirit, whether man or spirit, that has sponsored, that has sponsored. Any evil transaction, any evil transaction that is now at work in my life, that is now at work in my life. Let it return back to the sender. Let it return back to the sender. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. something is happening definitely and that's why I want you to mean business with this prayer last prayer that lady there that lady Touch that lady. Touch that lady. Touch her. Touch her. Touch her. Look at me, my dear. Touch her. Let her look at me. Just look at me from there. My dear, just look at me. Look at me. Look at me. God has heard your prayer. The chains are about to be broken. I want you to shout Jesus at the top of your voice there. Just shout, Jesus. The chains will be broken now. That's it. Be broken now. Out! Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name, in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Every pattern of stagnation. Every, Every pattern, pattern of stagnation. stagnation. Now listen to me very clearly. Stop praying and listen. Patterns can also be mindsets. Patterns can be mindsets, mainly mindsets. There are people who is obvious that you feel they know what to do to succeed, but they are not doing it. There are people who you see them keep repeating the same mistakes again and again. There are people who by their actions sabotage those whom God has sent to bless them. 
That's a mindset pattern. That's a behavioral pattern. Some of them don't know why they do it. There are ladies who when a good man comes into their life, their anger chases them away. And they only live to regret it later. So as you are praying it, some of you will begin to experience deliverance. It's not your fault that you are behaving like that. It was not Moses' fault that he was angry. Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, he said, cursed be their anger. The end of their anger will end in a curse. Moses was an anointed man, a mighty man. The only man in scripture that went 40 days without food, twice. He stepped into the dimension of creation where he could command the powers of creation. He could command the elements. He went back into time and saw what happened in Genesis and wrote it down. But because of his anger. What we're about to deal with now are issues from lineage. So I want you to be conscious as you pray this prayer. Because for some of us, the deliverance will start with you first. And be honest enough to pray. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of, the name Jesus. of Jesus. Every pattern of stagnation. Every pattern of stagnation. Every pattern of limitation. Every pattern of limitation. That has fought my life. That has fought my life. That has fought my advancement. That has fought my advancement. Be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Destroy in the name of Jesus. Be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Let my king believe that I rose out. Let my king believe that I I want you to lift your hands wherever you are. We are going to shout the name Jesus. The first deliverance, no song, please. Just lift your hands where you are. The power of deliverance is here. You are going to shout the name Jesus. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God is about to break the yokes in lineages, in families. God is about to undo demonic patterns. As you shout the name Jesus on the top of your voice, everything that sits as an impediment over your destiny and those in your family by reason of bloodline limitations is about to be put. Oh, I feel the anointing now. I want you on this shout. At the count of three, you are going to shout. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. You are distorting something now. I need your symbols and the strings. Let's walk, let's walk with what God is doing. Shout Jesus at the count of three. Yokes are coming down now. And chains connecting men to the limitations in their family will be broken. Father, I put an anointing on this shout. Let the power that rose Jesus from the grave break open every prison. Undo every demonic pattern. Break every chain that has held the destinies of men. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. One, two, three, shout Jesus. Every pattern, every chain, every yoke, ancestral yoke, be 
demonic yoke, yokes in bloodline, crosses in bloodline, be broken now, 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 does it, does it, does it. Now it's time to evict every unclean spirit that has existed in families, that has existed in the life of Mahato Katokaka. I feel the anointing strong. At the count of three, you shout Jesus again. Father, every spirit that is not from you, that has held captive any destiny, any life here, spirit responsible for affliction, spirit responsible for delay, in the name of Jesus, be evicted now as the sharp Jesus. Let the spirit be gone now. At the count of three, one, two, three, sharp Jesus. Go, 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 go. You are three spirits. Powers of hell. Spirits of the honorable. Spirit husbands. Let them go. Spirits of witchcraft. Deliverance is happening. Does it help them? The power of God is everywhere. I challenge every spirit of ancestry, spirits of the grave that keep calling you in dreams. I challenge spirits of territory. I stand in the name of Jesus by the rod of Melchizedek and I break your hold over their lives and I command you, go now, go now, go now, go now. Spirits of poverty, spirits of witchcraft, I challenge you by the name of Jesus, go. Ladies, please lift your hands. While we were praying, I saw in my vision rings. I saw ring, ring on the fingers of some people. And God said I should break every demonic covenant with spirit husbands. You are not married, but unknown to you there is a ring on your finger that is stopping men from coming. Ladies, you are going to shout the name Jesus at the count of three. And Father, I arrest by the shout of your name, the name by which every knee must bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And at every time we confess that Jesus is Lord. Lord, every spirit husband, every demon from hell that is in a covenant with your children, stopping their marital destiny, by this shout, let those spirits be evicted and let fire consume those rings. Let those rings come off your finger. At the count of three, one, two, three, shout Jesus. I send fire on those rings. 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 I break that covenant. You unclean spirits. I break your whole thing. Go, 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 go. That lady there, yes. Can you just lift your hands there, my dear? Just look at me. Father, let the limitation come to an end now. I stretch my right hand. The Bible says the right hand of God is power. It comes on you and your family. And every chain that has held the destiny of men is broken now. In the name of Jesus. Just stand by her. The anointing is very strong. I want to pray. Anyone whose womb has been tied here. 
in the name that is above every other name. I command those wombs to be released. The Bible says there was an earthquake and the foundations of the prison was shaking. Let that earthquake happen now in the spirit realm. And the Bible says the doors were open. I open the gates of every womb here. I open the gates of every womb here. And I prophesy by the grace of the prophetic that in nine months time you are giving birth to your child. You are giving birth to your child. In fact, the Lord said I should prophesy twins for some people. Twins. Whether you are standing for somebody or it's for you. Receive your miracle baby now. Receive your miracle baby now. Anyone whose career has been held by the enemy. I just saw certificates and the Lord said I should bring release to people's career in a name that is above every other name. You are studied, you are qualified, but no job. Everything that has kept your career on that chain, I provoke the anointing of the highest. Let those chains break loose. Break loose. Break loose. Break loose. Break loose. Break loose. Be released in the name of Jesus. Be released in the name of Jesus. Be released in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. By a mighty anointing, in seven days, let there be miracle jobs. Whether you are applying or you are not applying, whether you are ready or not, I release multiple opportunities to come to you. Miracle jobs coming to you. In the name of Jesus. Now, please put your right hand on your chest. This is the last prayer. And this one. Ah, I see an outbreak of the power of God here. I want to pray for those whose afflictions, I mean sickness, infirmities, those who are, whose afflictions are caused by spirits whether you know it or not, put your right hand on your chest and close your eyes where you are. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from every destruction. You sent your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord my You are the Lord. Just allow me to sing. That he led me. He's already touching them. You are the Lord. My healing. Father, I rebuke sickness. Every unclean spirit that has been deposited in the body of your children that has caused an affliction. Just be still, be quiet everywhere, except those who are under the anointing. Every disease, every infirmity associated with demonic yokes, associated with unclean spirits. I present the certificate and the receipt for their deliverance, which is the blood of Jesus. And I challenge every spirit I declare that you no longer reside in that body. I issue you a quick notice. And by the fire of the Holy Ghost, come out of their bodies. Come out of their minds. That's the power of God. Don't worry. Just eyes closed everywhere. Put your hand on your chest. Let them go now. Let them go now. 
afflictions in families afflictions in individuals let them go now you are the lord my healer you sent your word and heal my disease you are the lord my healer you are the lord release her now that he let me release her now you are the lord release her now my healer father i declare that your son is released let it go leave his life and the family out in the name of jesus you are the lord my healer can i pray for you my dear can i pray for you you love god There's something fighting your, your strength. There's something that always comes to make you weak sometimes. Sometimes people cannot understand, but you feel it in your body that you're not well. And even right now, as your two hands are on your chest, I see an attack of a heart condition that should come. And the sign is the unusual palpitations that you are beginning to have. It started with your heart, just sometimes your mind will cut, your heart will cut. And the devil has been trying to mess with that and also mess with your mind. There are a lot of things happening around your life too that God is bringing an end to by the release of his anointing. I see stagnations, I see delays. I see promises and fail. But God is bringing deliverance. He says, woman, thou art loosed from your infirmity. And dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, touch her by the anointing. Out of her, in the name of Jesus, you foul spirit. I command you, manifest and come out of her now. Let her go. She's a child of God. Let her go. In the name of Jesus. Father, let those spirits go. With us, oh, I, oh, I feel the anointing here strong. There is somebody here God wants to visit. Spirits of ancestry, infirmities that are blood related, bloodline related. Let it go now. Let it go now. Let it go. That's it. Deliverance is happening everywhere. Everywhere. Deliverance is happening. And healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. You are the Lord, that he let me. My healer. Oh, it's all right, my dear. It's all right. Please, somebody help this lady. It's all right, my dear. It's all right. This is the anointing on her. Please, somebody, just stay by her. This is a young lady. This is a young girl. What's wrong with him? Madam, you brought him. You lift your hands. God wants to bring deliverance. Lift your hands. You, you. I want to pray for you first. Lift your left hand. Put your right hand on your chest. Lift your left hand. Put your right hand. Father, let every demonic chain be broken off her life. Go in the name of Jesus. I release you now. Let her go. Let her go. That's it. That's it. 
a free what's wrong with you yes three months you were hospitalized sir for three months what's wrong okay is he prostrate prostrate you cannot walk right now you were helped here If they give you what? A supporting hand, you can move. Do you believe you walk now? If you walk, it means God has healed your prostrate. You said they were supposed to operate you. I came to tell you that Jesus gives you life. And Jesus sets you free. You are not going under the surgery. You are not going to the surgery table. God is going to heal you right now. Father, breathe upon him. Let the life of your glory rest upon him. Let every disease leave. Let strength come to his bones. Let strength come to his bones. Let strength come to his bones. I declare miracle in this spinal cord now. I declare miracle now. The life of God comes here now. The life of God comes here now. Let everything that is abnormal be corrected. From the crown of his head down to his lower back. Healed. Strength. 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 Raise your left up, sir. Raise your right leg. Bring it down. Raise the other one. The other one. Bring it down. Stretch your leg like this. Try. Bring it down. Stretch your left leg. Perfection in the name of Jesus. Perfection in the name of Jesus. Perfection. Clear the road. Clear the road. Perfection in the name of Jesus. By the life and the power of God. Perfection. Sir, look at me. Jesus has healed you. You are standing up to walk. Get up. Get up now, sir. Get up. Get up. Walk. Walk. You are healed. Walk. 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 Somebody give God praise. Give God praise. He was helped here. Healed by the power of God. Healed by the power of God. Healed. Walk, sir. Walk. That's it. You're walking. That's it. That's it. Come on, shout a praise to Jesus. How do you feel, sir? How do you feel? I feel strength, sir. You feel strength? Yes, sir. Let's walk some more. Is that okay? Let's walk. Strength. 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 Help him to sit. Help him to sit. What you cannot fix, what you cannot do, what you cannot solve, does not end. Is that a song tonight? What you cannot fix. What you cannot do, what you cannot serve as God. This is the confidence. This is the confidence. That's why we call on you. What you cannot do, what you cannot do, what you cannot do, what you cannot do. God is doing something this season. God is doing something. Hold my hand, my dear. Breathe upon her. Oh, there's power here. God is empowering you. Hmm? He's quickening dead things, including your spiritual life. 
is quickening dead things. How long has he been in that condition, madam? How long? Huh? 19 years. How do you feel, sir? I feel more strength, sir. You feel stronger? Yes, sir. As God has healed your legs and your spinal cord, he has healed you of prostrate. Amen. I want you to take him back to the hospital. Let them do a scan. All right, sir. And after the scan, remove this thing from his body. All right, sir. Because they give us date now. On 2nd March, they will do MRI for us. <laughs> I say go back and let them do a scan. All right, Now, sir. this is what will happen. Even from this night, when you go back, he will feel like he urinates properly, normally. Amen. Not this thing. Amen. Sir, the Lord heals you. Amen. And the Lord restores you completely. God bless you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It is well with you. Can you pray in the spirit wherever you are? When we come to you, what you cannot fix, what you cannot does not exist. How are you, my dear? Is this your first time here? Do you know me? Have you met me before? What's your name? Salumi. Salumi. Oh, oh okay, okay. Ah, you changed to the head now. Father, thank you. I brought the key for your brother's. It's your brother, right? The key for his miracle has come. You see me after now. Sir. Sir? Come, can I pray for you? You love God? You want to carry the anointing? Hold my hand. Whisper Jesus. Jesus. Whisper it again. Jesus. Whisper it the third time. Jesus. Father, touch him. Break every limitation and reason for your glory. The glory of God is here so strong. So strong. You deserve the glory. Wave your hands and give God praise. What a night. And the honor. We lift our voice in the
the life of God comes over this body and in the name of Jesus stroke is gone stroke is gone stroke is gone like you Jesus total restoration to your body total restoration slow gentle nobody else like you Jesus Like you, Lord, there is no one else. Heal. Heal. In the name of Jesus. There is no one else. No one else. Listen to me. The Lord said to me, marriages are being released. Marriages are being released. Amen. 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 I'm speaking both to women and men. Marriages are released. Amen. This year, there will be so much favor for marriage. That from next month, there will be at least one person from here that will get married. Yeah. You watch what happens. From next month, the person who will wed next month, I don't know you, but you are here. From next month, March, April, May to December, marriages are released. Yeah. Mama is okay. God is bringing restoration to this family. Hmm? Amen. God is bringing restoration. Amen. All right? Don't cry again. Don't be bitter at anybody. Amen. God is bringing restoration. Amen. Restoration. Can you lift your voice and thank the Lord for what he has done tonight? Blessed be the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus.
get water. Sorry, we are going to go. Just give us a moment. Just get me water. God is doing something. Tonight, when you go to sleep, from this night till Sunday, may God show you in a dream divine visitation that has come by reason of your prayers tonight. Some of you will be taken to your villages, to your father's compound, your mother's compound. In fact, there is a lady I'm seeing, something was collected from you when you were born and tied in a leather, a nylon, a black nylon and hung on a tree. And the tree that they hang it on does not bear fruit. It bears scanty leaf, but in the name of Jesus, it is retrieved from that place. Whatever has been concocted against you by reason of witchcraft, this night may God show you the deliverance that has been perpetrated. Can you give the Lord 60 seconds of praise and thanksgiving? Bless his name. <laughs>